Hi guys and welcome back to episode 3 of PremiumBeat.com's Resolve Editing Crash Course. Today we have the part everyone looks forward to, the edit tool. No introduction to this episode, if you've come straight from episode 2, then you should know the layout of the edit page. Our primary focus this episode will be on these tools, the markers, and changing some of the elements of the track. Although, I do need to point out that between episode 2 and 3, Blackmagic did release Resolve 15.2, and there are some slight changes to the UI and how the timeline animates the edit, but nothing that is going to change your learning process. And if you are interested in what has been added, you can find that information on the premiumb.com blog. First, we have the primary and default selection tool, which you get to by pressing A if you've moved away from it. I'm sure everyone, even if you're completely new to Resolve, will understand what the selection tool does. You can move and rearrange clips, you can extend and decrease the duration of a clip, and these little white handles at the beginning and end of each clip, well, you can drag these inward and it will create a fade in or out. And you can do this with both the video and the audio clips. And as noted in the previous episode, you can also adjust the volume of an individual audio clip by moving the volume bar up or down. Next to the selection tool is the trim tool, but for this moment, as this is going to be our primary focus on the episode, I want to jump quickly to the blade tool, which is B on the keyboard. The blade tool will splice clips up into smaller clips for further adjustment or deletion. And what's nice about the blade tool is that unlike other tools, we have a viewer preview that appears when we hover above the clip, so we don't have to move the playhead to see what we're splicing. Now the blade tool will also splice any linked audio. So for example, you may just want to remove this section of the video, but have the audio remain intact. So you hit B, splice the points you want to delete, but you have both the video and audio react to the edit. In this instance, we don't want that. So you can either unlink the clips by right clicking on the video or the audio and hit link clips. I know that it says that we are linking them, but if there's a tick next to the action, it means we will be turning that feature off or doing the opposite to what it says. Likewise, we can also deselect the linked selection button here. And this works in a similar fashion. It will allow you to splice just the audio or the video. It will let you move the audio or video individually However, as noted by the chain link symbol on the clips, they are still intrinsically linked and will become as one if you were to ever turn the link selection button back on. And while we are here, you may have noticed when I have moved the audio away from the video, this red timestamp appears. And that's to tell us that our connected media is out of sync. If this isn't an intended edit, you can right click and select move into place, which will take the media which is clicked to the new position or slip into place which will keep the media in its current position, but slip the footage into place. Not too sure what slip means? Well, let's jump to the trim edit mode and find out. Now you can get to trim edit mode by pressing this button or you can press T. When you are in trim edit mode, you can achieve different trim edits depending on where you place your cursor on the media clip. Now this is a much faster process. You no longer have to find various keyboard shortcuts or find the particular edit tool icon, it's all under the one extension. So let's have a look at what tasks you can perform and how they work. However, before doing so, if you have auto select off, we do need that on to get the full benefits of trim mode as some trim edits won't perform properly. And yes, we will finally be talking about auto select a little later. A roll edit. Although you will find this edit under the trim operations in any guidebook or manual, you can perform a roll edit in the selection mode also. You simply place the cursor directly within an edit point, which is where one clip connects to another, and in doing so, the cursor will change to this icon. With a roll edit, you will increase or decrease the length of the clip while increasing or decreasing the length of the adjacent clip. For example, in this video clip, I don't want the woman to walk into the doorway, I want her to already be standing there. Now, I could decrease the length of the clip from the start point to where I want it removed, and that would give me what I want, but then we have this empty space which of course can then be covered up by extending the preceding clip. But that is one click too many, and we can do it simply by roll editing. A ripple edit. To perform a ripple edit, bring your cursor slightly in from the edge of a clip, and the following icon will appear and will allow you to proceed with a ripple edit. With a ripple edit, when you increase or decrease the length of a clip you've selected, 
all other media clips on the timeline, providing that they are on a track with auto select active, will move forward or backward with the clip. So when you increase the duration of a clip, it ripples all of the other media in the same direction. So nothing other than the length of that clip and the length of the timeline is changed. As a side note, if the edge of your clip is highlighted green, that means that the clip still has unused footage, which you can extend to. If the edge is red, that signifies that there is no more footage to work from. A slip edit. It's very easy to accidentally perform a slide edit instead of a slip edit, as the area from one tool to the other is very minimal. To perform a slip edit while in trim mode, place the cursor on the thumbnails of the track, quite virtually the middle area of the clip. And the slip edit is quite easily my favorite trim tool and how it works is that it will slip the placement of the media to a different section than what was marked in when inserting the clip to the timeline. So let's take this clip. If I double click and bring it into the source view, we can see where the marked in and out region is and we still have all this media available to the left and right of our marked points. The slip edit will allow you to move the media to a different section of what is available. Of course, if you have a shorter clip in length and you insert the entire clip onto the timeline, this is one edit that you're not going to be able to perform. A slide edit. To perform a slide edit, you need to place the cursor underneath the thumbnails where the title of the media clip is located. If you do have a minimized view of the tracks, it may be harder to find the placement to position the trim cursor correctly. A slide edit will allow you to slide the clip's position along the track and in doing so it will increase or decrease the position of the neighboring clips. So in that manner it's kind of like a roller edit but you're moving the position of the selected clip on the track more so than extending or decreasing either side. You'll also see a four panel split screen in the timeline viewer showing you the new endpoints for the previous clip and the new start point for the preceding clip and the in and out section of the clip being moved to allow you to move the clip with precision. These are the trim tools and when I first got into editing, I didn't use them as I felt like they were a gimmick and it was only a few years later that I saw how beneficial they were. So if you are new to editing and feel the same, trust me, get to know these tools sooner rather than later. With the trim tools covered, let's look at using flags and markers. As this is a crash course, there's a good chance you're entirely new to editing and using flags and markers to highlight errors or to include information for the audio editor, the visual effects guy, may seem a little overkill when it's more than likely just yourself editing. However, they are great to bookmark a particular moment or a particular clip to remind you to fix an error or to perhaps let you know that this clip needs to be reshot. To place a marker on a clip, you need to have the clip selected and hit the marker button up by pressing M or you can press G or the flag button to flag the clip instead. You can then double click the marker or flag and insert the details needed and even change the color to let you quickly find clips that have been color coded with a specific issue. If you're wondering, the difference between a flag and marker is that the flag will just flag a clip as a whole, whereas a marker will mark that frame of that clip. Alternatively, if you don't want to mark a clip specifically but just want that moment of the entire timeline marked, perhaps to remind yourself to insert sound effects of a footstep, you can deselect the clip and just hit M on the timeline to create a timeline marker. And this will also appear on the timeline when fully zoomed out, so you can quickly jump to a mark selection. In Resolve 15, Blackmagic also introduced an annotation feature, which is very impressive. But in the spirit of keeping this episode short, I am going to be a little cheeky and direct you to the write-up on the feature over on the blog. To conclude this episode, let's introduce you to a feature I've talked about quite a bit, the auto select. The auto select might be one of Resolve's most important edit functions and you need to understand how it works because it's going to directly affect how the clips on your timeline responds to edits. For example, here I've marked a selection on the timeline using I and O to mark in and out and we can see that the auto select is active for video track 1 and audio track 1 but it's not active for audio track 2. You'll see upon deleting the marked range, audio track 2 is left out of the edit even though it's part of the marked area. And you can see if I turn it off for audio one, but turn it on for audio two, then audio one is left out of the edit. So in essence, auto select is letting Resolve know, yes, I want to be affected by the timeline and track edits. And this is gonna be the same for the ripple edit, if you enter a clip from the timeline and so on. Sometimes though, it can catch you out as auto select is on by default. So if for example, I'm gonna add this soundtrack to a new track, and I want it to start at 30 seconds. 
And then a little later on, I decide that video clip from track two isn't working and it doesn't have auto select on. I'm just gonna delete that clip. And what you will see is that the audio track is gonna slide back to account for the deleted space of the media clip on track two. So that element can be quite confusing and it can catch you out. I do find it's best to either have auto select on for all tracks or to have it completely off. So this was the secondary episode to the edit page and combined with the first segment, you should now have good enough knowledge to add clips to the timeline in the correct fashion and of course edit them with the edit tools. In our next episode, we will look at working with audio on the edit page and using some elements of the Fairlight audio page. Catch you next time.